When talking about acoustic guitars, generally the focus is on the artisans who make them, the artists who play them, and what they're made out of. Seldom is the spotlight pointed at who does the inlay. Well, that changes in today's show, because I'm going to be introducing you to six amazing, mind-blowing inlay artists. Hey, TAC family, welcome to episode 209 of the Acoustic Tuesday Show. This show is all about bringing fun, focus, and progress to your guitar journey through my weekly Guitar Geek list, plus success stories from your fellow TAC family members. Have you ever had a guitar goal that maybe frightened you? Have you ever put a solid plan in place to achieve that goal? Well, TAC family member Richard has one of those very goals, and he made one of those very plans. In fact, in today's show, you're going to meet Richard and find out what his goal is and the surprising way he's going to get himself there. Plus, you'll see what the TAC family is working on this week, and it happens to be a blues lick in the key of B. And as usual, you'll get your weekly dose of acoustic news you can use, which includes quite a few stops on the new music train, a signature guitar model that is a tribute of sorts, and so much more. But first, let's get inspired and meet some masters of guitar inlay. Whether you're a fan of elaborately inlaid acoustic guitars, or you prefer your acoustic guitars a little more understated, I think all of us guitar geeks can agree that inlay work requires a high level of skill and artistry, which is exactly why I want to introduce to you these six masters of inlay. These artists are absolutely amazing. You're going to meet each of them, you're going to see examples of their work, and then at the end, I'm going to give you a resource to where you can learn more about each artist and discover the history of guitar inlay. It's pretty fascinating. It's something I stumbled across and I can't wait to share it with you. But let's dig into the artists first. First up on my list is Larry Robinson. You might be familiar with that name because he first came into prominence when he did the Martin D45 Peacock. This guitar features a back that is nearly completely inlaid with the image of a peacock. It's pretty darn striking. Well, his name came up again in my guitar journey because I had a chance to play a Martin D100, and he was commissioned to do the inlay work on it. Again, it's a stunning example of artistry at the highest level. Let's go ahead and take a look at that guitar, and, well, since I played it, let's have a listen. Next up on the list is inlay artist Harvey Leach. Wow, wow, wow. Talk about an artist. I mean, cutting edge, soft-spoken, and just incredibly good at his craft. Here he is describing a guitar that he inlaid for Martin that was to be displayed alongside their millionth guitar. Check this out. The name for it came up as Smoke and Mirrors. The first inlays that I did for Martin was for a recreation of a these Western scenes. And it was on a guitar that was made to debut with their one millionth guitar yeah. at a big trade show. And I wanted to do something special, so I came up with this idea. And that guitar has an inlay of a bar scene on it with a mirror in the background. So I used this to create the mirror, and it also has a train on the headstock which has smoke coming out of it. Yeah. And the smoke from the train obscures the Martin name, yeah. you know, which had never been done before on the guitars. But one of the guys at Martin, Dick Boak, he coined the phrase smoke and mirrors, and it's kind of stuck with it as that's what this technique has been called ever since. Yeah. Well, this is Mother of Pearl. One of the unique characteristics of Mother of Pearl is that it's highly reflective and colorful, but you can also see through it. On certain angles, you can see whatever's behind it. So you can use this as a type of glass to lay over the surface of things and it creates this cool smoke and mirrors effect. It's kind of a holographic effect. And it's kind of become my trademark to do. Next, I want to feature the wife of Jean Larivee of Larivee Guitars. Yes, Wendy Larivee is an awesome inlay artist. Through the years, Larivee have done all these different special edition models that have elaborately inlaid headstocks, and they all have kind of a theme. Well, those headstocks, the inlay patterns on those headstocks were designed by Wendy Larivee, and she did the inlay work for them as well. Here's a fine example brought to you by Dream Guitars. This is a Jester-themed D10. Now 
we're gonna head over to Sisters, Oregon and visit the fine folks at Thompson Guitars, specifically Simon Haycraft, because he's the next inlay artist on my list. Simon is responsible for all the custom inlay coming out of the Thompson Guitars shop, and his work is jaw-dropping. He has such an eye for materials, and his design and layout is impeccable. In fact, you're gonna see some of his work right now. This is on the Thompson Guitars Masterpiece number two. It's a stunning guitar, and Simon Haycraft was the brainchild behind it. As you can see, this fretboard has quite a lot going on on it. The two fish echoing the fish on the back, bringing a bit of continuity. But I definitely wanted to do a full, full fretboard, full design, which we hadn't done yet here at Thompson. The brass perf gives this movement, these swirling movements. Like the coloring on the body of the guitar, I also wanted the background beyond the fish to be more subdued. So I've used three different green recon stone to give that variance, but still a muted look. And then the lilies are a mixture of pink muscle. And then uh, the cherry blossoms, just a nice, another theme that goes well with the koi and the fish, you know, it's kind of an iconic subject matter, particularly in the East. But I wanted to join them up, so I used the kind of petals coming off the flowers and then floating down onto the water, thus creating a kind of a joining between those two scenes and almost giving a slightly mystical look to it. The next artist that I wanna feature is celebrating his 50th year as a luthier and inlay artist, and it's none other than Grit Laskin. Grit Laskin, in my opinion, continues to raise the bar on guitar inlay. His concepts are amazing, they're cutting edge, and his choice of material and color is just beautiful. He paints with all the colors on the palette and I feel like nothing stands in his way. In fact, here's a great example of one of his guitars. And so Grit sort of take, took this opportunity to not only do that, but to also sort of bring in some elements of humor as well as realism, which he's a really big fan of. Often when he does his inlay art for other, for customers, they often want sort of more idealized, beautiful sorts of depictions of, of people or things, but Grit really likes to have a little bit of like human element um, in his art as well. So he really kind of incorporated that here. As you see, his workbench, which is, kind of looks like it's like it might look in reality. It's not quite pristine. It looks like it's actively being used. You have Grit there himself working away. Up here on the third fret, we've got a sign that really does hang in Grit's workshop, reading handmade guitars only at this point. And up here on the first fret, we have Grit's hand, which is putting into place the left hand of Peggy Seeger, one of his biggest influences, as well as a personal friend. And of course, above her, we've got her partner, Ewan McCall. For folks who don't know, Peggy and Ewan were huge influences on the, both the British and American folk revivals, and they've had a lasting impression on Grit's music up until today as well. So that's why this guitar is called Grit Gives Peggy a Hand. Thank you so much for checking out this Grit Laskin 50th anniversary guitar with me today. If you want to learn more, please come visit us at thenorthamericanguitar.com and don't forget to hit subscribe so that you never miss any of our Presents videos or other content. Thanks for watching. The final artist on my list is a woman by the name of Renee Carnes, and she does magnificent inlay work on banjos. In fact, she jokes in this clip that people ask her what she does, and she says she builds banjos and then she shows them a banjo and they say, oh, you build banjos. Uh, her work is, like I said, magnificent and it'll make your jaw drop on the floor. Here's a quick example. I think on a musical instrument, it's uh, just bigger and bolder. It wouldn't be as spectacular if it wasn't on that. That's the palette, that's, that's the uh, canvas that you're working on. You, you can't describe it to people, you know, you tell people, I, I, I build banjos, and they go, oh, yeah, right. And then you show them, and they go, oh, you built banjos. That short clip that you just watched is from the very resource that I want to share with you. It's something that I stumbled across while I was researching today's show, and I thought to myself, 
All the guitar geeks in the world need to see this. It's a documentary brought to you by the folks at the Musical Instrument Museum in Phoenix, and it's entitled Dragons and Vines. This documentary is short. In fact, it comes in three parts. At least that's the version I watched, and that's the version I'm gonna share with you. And it goes through the history of musical instrument inlay, the recent history, and you get interviews from each of the key players in the inlay world. In fact, some of the very inlay artists I mentioned today are in this documentary. So just to wet your whistle, I wanna give you a quick clip from this documentary that shows one of the key players, the Duke of Pearl. I was pretty hot stuff when I was doing inlay. I mean, I was doing stuff nobody did. I was using finer blades. I was doing more detail. I was uh, doing designs that nobody thought to do. But then guys came along like Larry Robinson um, that took what I was doing and took it to a new level. And now there's guys that take what Larry's doing, like Harvey Leach, and Harvey's doing stuff that, that Larry Robinson won't even touch. I mean, it, it, the kind of detail that Harvey's getting into is just insane. I'm, I'm not really doing a lot of inlay work where it's just a vine or something like that. It's usually something more more personal to the to the customer themselves. I'm really adaptable, and I've done a lot of different art styles and art periods. I, I love Art Nouveau, I love Japanese art, I love Celtic art. I've done a bunch of Art Deco over the years and classical Greek and, and Empire. And I, I've pretty much covered most of the art periods. I, I couldn't do that stuff. It's sort of like the Olympics, you know, every year someone beats somebody else's record. It doesn't mean the old guys were bad, it's just the new guys have finer techniques and better materials, better equipment. And, and more knowledge available, and they're just pushing the limits. I do want to encourage you to watch that full documentary. It's about 18 minutes long. It's divvied up into three different sections, all in one video clip, and I'll be sure to link it in the show notes below. Now, since we're on the topic of inlay, I want to ask you, is there an inlay artist that I forgot about? Let me know in the comments below. Yes, indeed, it is now time for your new favorite part of the show, the Tuesday Tack Guitar Lick Challenge. And this week finds us in the key of B, looking at a lick entitled Wedgie. Wedgie. It's an unfortunate, uncomfortable position to be in. And it also happens to be the name of your Tuesday Guitar Lick Challenge. In fact, everything this week within Tony's Acoustic Challenge has an uncomfortable name of sorts. We've got Wedgie, Wet Willy, and Swirly. Tone, why did you name the challenges like this? Well, to me, the key of B in music on guitar is a bit of a bully, hence the name of all of the challenges this week. We're also, the, the underlying musical theme, yes, is the key of B, but we're also gonna be incorporating bends into nearly everything we do this week. And bends can be well, slightly bullyish on your fingers. So yeah, there's a lot of reasoning behind the names this week, but Wedgie is what we're working on today. It's the Guitar Lick Challenge, and here's what it sounds like. What an awesome lick. One of my absolute favorites for three distinct reasons. Reason number one, it's a blues lick. I don't have to say any more. It reminds me of Johnny Winter, reminds me of Muddy Waters. I guess I did have to say a little bit more. Reason number two, it's sparse. Yes, there are not a lot of notes being played here, but the notes you are playing are quite important and they have huge impact. Reason number three, and probably the most important reason, is that this is a closed position lick, meaning there are no open strings. Why is that so important? It's so important because once you learn this lick, you can move it around the neck and play it in any key. That to me is incredibly powerful. Now, if you're sitting there wanting to learn this lick note for note, you can do that. Tack fam, just go ahead and log in, click start challenge from your homepage and boom, it's Tuesday. Tuesday is guitar lick challenge day. And this is today's guitar lick challenge. You'll be taken right to a teaching video where you can learn it note for note. After that, you can move to the play along video, pick a speed that's comfortable for you. And if you wanna follow along with the tablature, go ahead and click that tab icon in the lower right hand corner and pop that tab open in a brand new window and boom, you'll have everything right on your computer screen ready to learn. Okay, so how do you actually use this lick in a musical context? Now, I don't personally play in the key of B a whole heck of a lot. I certainly don't do it without a capo. In fact, 
I try and avoid the key of B, if at all possible. That being the case, when I do play in the key of B, it's mostly closed position out of necessity. So what I'm going to do is show you this particular lick with a closed position bass riff. Now this bass riff is just kind of a repeated riff that gives you a sense of rhythm, that gives you a sense of drive. But if I repeated this bass riff for a long time, it's going to get pretty boring. And that's where this lick shines. We're going to break things up using this lick. I'll play the bass riff, I'll move to the lick. I'll play the bass riff, I'll move to the lick. It creates this, it creates much more depth if I'm adding this lick in every now and then than if I just simply played the bass riff. Here's the example. What a fantastic lick, one I've always enjoyed playing, and one that I've always found hypnotizing. I hope you dug it, and I hope you get a chance to integrate this into your playing, and I hope you find it as enjoyable and as hypnotizing as I have. Now, there's one quick thing I want to talk to you about before we get back to the show, and that is the 10 minute rule. So often I hear this Tony, you're telling me that if I play 10 minutes of guitar per day, I'm going to become a better guitar player? That doesn't seem like enough. That simply isn't enough time to become awesome. And I'm going to tell you, yes, it is. The 10 minute rule is there for a reason. It's actually backed by science. Plus, it allows you to maintain a daily guitar routine, a realistic daily guitar routine. There's so many things that are happening around us all the time, from work schedules to family things, vacations, you name it, stuff is happening all the time. And I know for a fact that you can carve out at least 10 minutes to play guitar. So if the difference is playing 10 minutes versus not playing at all, well, at least you got some guitar time in. So that's a win. And what if you sit down for 10 minutes and you realize, oh, I got the afternoon off. I'll continue to play. And you end up playing for an hour. That's a win as well. The 10 minute rule places you in a scenario, a win-win scenario. You either get your 10 minutes in and you got your guitar playing in for the day, or you sit down for 10 minutes and pretty soon it's an hour later and you've been playing guitar for an entire hour. The 10 minute rule puts you in a win-win scenario. And that's incredible. And that's why the basis of a solid daily guitar routine is a 10 minute daily playing session. If you can commit to that, I can guarantee you, you'll become a better guitar player because you will achieve daily progress. And that is oh so important on anyone's guitar journey. I was just talking about how effective 10 minutes of guitar playing per day can be. And TAC family member Richard is using that very 10 minute rule to work towards his frightening guitar goal. Here's a clip from the latest Tony's Acoustic Challenge 90 day progress party, where Richard shared with everybody what his goal is and how he plans on getting there. It uh, builds on my last goal, and that was to take a song and uh, learn it and play it in front of my wife. And I'm going to expand on that. And this is a big goal for me, Tony, because I find this quite fright frightening. I want to be, I want to learn a song or or an improv uh, scale and uh, post it and uh, see see how that works out. But uh, I'm committed to that. Uh, and how I'm going to reach that goal is, is again, practice a song, get really fluid. Well, I'm, I'm fortunate in that being semi-retired. So I play, in the last 90 days, I was able to play seven days a week. Um, and, but I do it at, I do it at uh, uh, seven o'clock to 7.30 in the morning. No one's around. Uh, don't get interrupted by, uh, by foot, by the phone. And I'm able to dedicate that, uh, as you said, it usually works out more than 10 minutes, but certainly a minimum of 10 minutes. And, and I'm going to use that time to really get to know some, when I say no songs, it's not reading, reading them off the sheet, but being able to play it and then really enjoy it and being fluid. Thanks to Richard for giving us some insight into his guitar journey. Now, there are two things here that I want to underscore that I think are extremely important. The first one is he's trusting the process. He's trusting his guitar routine, which sounds awesome, by the way. Right off the bat in the morning, he's getting his 10 minutes of guitar playing in. That's a pretty, pretty great way to start the day. The second thing I want to underscore is how he set his guitar goal. He refers to his goal as frightening. 
And I think this is crucial to highlight because when you set a guitar goal, it should be challenging enough to push you just a little bit outside your current comfort zone. It shouldn't be so wild and crazy that it's unattainable, and it shouldn't be too easy that you can do it in just a simple matter of days. Richard has really found the sweet spot here. It's something that is pushing him past his comfort zone, and it's something that when he achieves it, he's gonna feel pretty darn good. Now, as I mentioned before, Richard shared this on the most recent Tony's Acoustic Challenge 90 Day Progress Party. And for you TAC members wanting to attend the next one, please mark your calendars for January 5th, 2022 at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. That will be the next live Tony's Acoustic Challenge Progress Party, and it's sure to be an awesome one. In fact, it's the best way to kick off 2022 as your best year of guitar yet. Make sure to fasten your seat belts, put your tray tables in the upright position because we are aboard the Acoustic Tuesday private jet and we're headed to Bar Harbor, Maine. We're gonna visit Brian Dion and his son, Dakota, and have a look at their guitar arsenal. Their guitar arsenal comes with a little bit of a message and here's what they have to say. First, I wanna thank you, Tony. You have inspired my son and I all summer long. Watching your videos, it's obvious there is so much inspiration to be had if you pay attention to how much of it is around us. Your show certainly helps all of us do just that from history to inspiring stories from your viewers. Thank you for this and keep up the outstanding work. Today is the last day of summer for us, Dakota and I, and as a teacher, I head back to school tomorrow and thus our father-son summertime has come to an end. Dakota and I watch your Acoustic Tuesday show every week in the summer and it's always a highlight of the week. My son has been asking, begging me to send in a photo of our guitar arsenal for some time, and then when you ran out of photos, well, I guess we decided to get our guitar arsenal shirt, great shirts by the way, and submit a photo. As a physical education teacher, I have always been inspired by my students who would play, and being near the music department, I got to hear their struggles and the successes along the way. Well, when I turned 40, I decided to give it a try. Eight years later, I continue to enjoy the struggle and gift that is playing the guitar. Last year, my youngest son joined me in the process. While some may say I got him into guitar, I can easily say he inspires me each and every day to both be a better dad and guitar player. Guitar is now a new way for us to communicate with each other and enjoy our time together. We have learned from many of your videos and truly appreciate all you've done for us and the entire guitar community. On the couch is my Ibanez Parlor Solid Mahogany, the first guitar that started it all, Left to right, my Martin OM28, a brand new Fender Ultra, my son's Martin GPC 16CE, my son's brand new Fender Pro 2, my son's little Martin, and my Taylor GS Mini Mahogany. Also pictured is the guitar my students, the teacher signed the back, made for me in shop class at our school several years ago. It's an original and I wouldn't trade it for the world. The fenders are so new, we haven't even removed the plastic pickguard covers yet. Thank you, Tony, for inspiring us all and sharing what inspires you with the rest of us. So happy to be a part of the guitar community and thankful for all the inspiration out there. Lots of laughs just trying to get all the guitars in the photo together without damaging them. Enjoy your family and guitar each and every day. What an awesome guitar arsenal. And you might be sitting there thinking, gosh, I wanna get featured on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. I wanna have my guitar arsenal featured on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. And with that, I kick us on over to my special announcement. I wanna to propose to you a win, win, win scenario. I wanna feature you on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Yes, I wanna feature you and your guitar arsenal or you and your Acoustic Tuesday merchandise. Step number one, go to tonypolacastro.com forward slash shop. Once you're there, pick out your favorite guitar arsenal shirt, your favorite Acoustic Tuesday merchandise, get it shipped directly to your door. Step number two, once your merchandise arrives, go ahead and put it on and take a picture of yourself, either just wearing Acoustic Tuesday merchandise, or if you have a guitar arsenal shirt, take a picture in front of all of your guitars. And then once you're done with that, step number three is to upload your picture at tonypolacastro.com forward slash shop. There's a link right on that page. Click it, you can upload your photo, and boom, you'll be featured in the Acoustic Tuesday show. Win number one, you get featured in the Acoustic Tuesday show. Win number two, you get some cool snazzy Guitar Geek merchandise. Win number three, the biggest win of them all, all proceeds from the TonyPolacastro.com forward slash shop are being donated to Guitars for Vets. You get featured in the show, you get cool new shirts, cool new merchandise, and you help out Guitars for Vets. Win, win, win. Okay, back to the show. All right, all right, all right. It's time for acoustic news you can use. And I have a whole slew of new music I wanna share with you. First up, 
Well, Norman Blake has a new album coming out October 22nd. Yes, in just three short days, he'll be releasing the album Day by Day on Smithsonian Folkways. And I want you to hear a track from it right now. The track is entitled, I'm Free Again. Oh, I'm free. I'm free again. Yes, I'm free. Free at last. But sometimes it makes me wonder all the visions of the past. Next up in the news is Justin Towns Earl's signature model acoustic guitar from the folks at Recording King. Now, prior to Justin's passing, both him and Recording King were working on this guitar. Well, it's finally come to fruition, and it's been released almost as a tribute to Justin Towns Earl. And it's a very vibey guitar, very vintage-inspired, and just a cool-looking, cool-sounding, cool guitar that has a legacy, that has this wonderful tribute to an amazing singer-songwriter. Let's give it a listen. <laughs> Hartman is at it yet again. She's just released another single off of her forthcoming album entitled Glade. The single's name is Wandering, and it is beautiful. It is stunning. It is all things awesome. Let's give it a listen. And we can make a life of being free. And we can make a life of you and me. And we can make a life of wandering. And the wandering doesn't have to happen alone. Last up on the list for today is a musical duo that's new to me named The Lost Steens. Their harmonies are amazing, the songwriting is awesome, and I just needed to share them with you. We're going to listen to their song last night, but before we do so, I just want to extend a huge thanks to the folks at Western AF. If you're not subscribed to the Western AF YouTube channel, you absolutely should be, because they find some amazing singer-songwriters, shoot videos, and expose the world to these hidden talents, if you will, these under-the-radar musicians that really should be way more well-known. And I feel like that's Western AF's mission. So please subscribe to their YouTube channel, and if you really dig it, make sure to support them on Patreon. With all that being said, let's listen to the Lost Deans play their song last night. And on those sweet, sweet notes, I think it's a great time to wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show for today. But before I do that, let's take a sneak peek into next week. And next week, as we approach Halloween, things are getting spooky. Yes, next week we're going to take a look at D minor tuning. How to get to D minor tuning, how to navigate it, and how to use it as a compositional tool. That's happening next week on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Please remember you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday right here on YouTube at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Before I let you go, please do remember this. Your guitar success, however you define it, is directly related to your guitar routine. So please invest the time in developing your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every single day that you play. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek, and I'll see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Cheers, and guitar geeks unite.